بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وعلى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. We're going over chapter number 23 in regards to the eating of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first hadith being narrated by the son of Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu anhu. And I went into detail who Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu anhu was, the connection he had with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the status he had amongst the companions and who he was as an individual. So his son narrates, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his son narrates from him, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yal'aqu asabi'ahu thalathan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam licked his fingers thrice after eating. You know, just in general, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stressed to us how as human beings, how as individuals, how as believers, we should not be wasteful. We should not be wasteful to an extent that even if an individual is making wudu, wudu is a virtuous act. Wudu is a prerequisite for salah. Salah is a direct conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even a prerequisite of that. And we all know the virtues of wudu. An individual should not even be wasteful when he's performing wudu, even if he, if he be in a flowing river even if he be performing wudu in a flowing river. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just in general emphasized how we should never be waste, wasteful, whether it be in terms of food, whether it be in terms of resources, islaf, in whatever case it may be. Whatever case it may be, it is not something which is permitted for an individual to do. To an extent that, you know, we are such that we have such blessings from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that we forget to even value the simple things and therefore we end up wasting them. Uh, we end up not even caring for, 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 for things. You know, how many of us are such that we throw away food on a daily basis? Rather with every meal of ours, we are throwing constantly throwing away food. Rather it's such that many times we make so much food that if we don't, you know, it, it's going to go bad. So we eventually we end up throwing it away. We end up throwing it away. Uh, we'll, we'll understand from the next chapter that months would go by and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, fire would not be lit in the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rather, times would go by that they would not be able to eat two meals in one day except for one meal consisting of dates. So if they were to have two meals, one would be act an actual meal, bread or whatever. And one, and that bread was not actual, you know, like fine flour bread, as we'll get into. But it would be, you know, like barley uh, uh, flour or, or you know, um, a flour which has not been sifted through. I mean, not, not, not bread that we are used to eating by any means. Now bread that perhaps we can even digest. They would eat that in one meal and the next meal would have to be dates because they could not have bread again or they would not have the means to have bread again. So the Prophet Sallallahu never wasted anything and he was extremely grateful for all the blessings that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had given. ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you will be asked about the ni'mas, about the blessings. If you try and count the blessings of Allah, you will not be able to do so. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he says the two bless, the, the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. Your health, your health, and the sense of safety that we have. This is what Allah is going to ask. These are blessings that they're counting. These are blessings, things that we don't even consider to be blessings. We, we, we forgot, we take them for granted. So imagine everything else that we enjoy, how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take us to task for that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man asbaha minkum, uh, that individual who wakes up, aminan fi sirbihi, mu'afan fi jasadihi, indahu qutu yawmihi, fa ka'annama hizat lahu dunya, aw kama qal. That, that individual who wakes up, he has a sense of safety, which we all, alhamdulillah, do. 
by and large we do. Mu'afan fi jasadi, bodily we are healthy. We Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us health. Obviously, we have our hiccups here and there. But by and large, by and large, we have a lot to be grateful for in terms of our health. Many have it a lot worse than us. He has enough for that particular day. Not for the entire week, not for the entire month, not for, you know, months can go by and we won't have to go shopping if we had to. Obviously, we want to, but if we had to, we have enough foods and food in our house that if we were to ration it properly, we could go by months. We could go by months. He has enough just for that day. It is as if he has conquered the world. The world is his. The world is his. So the Prophet was never, ever wasteful. He was never, ever wasteful to an extent. As we understand from these narrations, the Prophet would even lick his fingers. Whatever is remaining of food on his hands, he would lick his fingers. He would, he would consume that as well. He would clean his fingers by putting them in his mouth. We also understand from these narrations, rather the, next, the very next narration, which Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu, he says, إِذَا أَكَلَ طَعَامًا لَعِيقَ أَصَابِعَهُ الثَّلَاثِ The Prophet ﷺ used to lick his three fingers after eating food. Meaning the Prophet ﷺ would primarily eat with three fingers. Eating with more at that time would be a sign of, a sign of pride, a sign of kibar, a sign of arrogance, thinking that you're better than someone else. Um, or eating with less than that, perhaps also, the Prophet ate with three fingers. The Prophet would eat with three fingers. You know, some, it's such that this doesn't mean that an individual cannot eat with a spoon. An individual cannot eat with more fingers if he, does it, if, if, he, if he needs to. Absolutely, he can. But two things have to be met. One, it should not be a sign of thinking that you're prideful. And as far as I know, that's not the case when we eat with spoons or silverware. And number two, an individual, and this is my personal opinion, if an individual is eating in public or an individual is eating with company and he cannot eat with his hands or with his fingers in such a manner that it does not disgust others, he should stick with eating with a spoon and a fork, a spoon, fork, knife, whatever else he needs. He should stick with using that, whatever he is comfortable in. Whatever he can eat in such a way that it doesn't disgust other individuals. I've, uh, you know, just personally speaking, I, I um, have, have a weak stomach. And if I'm sharing uh, or I'm sitting in front of someone and they're eating in a, in a barbaric manner, in a disgusting manner, uh, with their mouth open, chewing loudly, burping, you know, everything, spitting food out, uh, picking up morsels and putting it into their mouth and half of the morsels falling down, as many of us unfortunately do, that makes me lose my appetite, personally speaking. I would much rather have that person eat with a spoon, eat with a spoon, eat with a fork, use a knife, eat in a proper manner, and in turn, not disgust anyone else, not make anyone else lose their appetite over using their fingers, using their hands to eat. Obviously, the Prophet ﷺ used to use his fingers, use his hands to eat typically. But as long as not disgusting anyone, as long as not being a trouble to anyone, an individual should. An individual does it great. If an individual does it with the intention uh, that, that he doesn't want to disgust anyone, that's actually better for him. So the Prophet ﷺ used to lick his fingers thrice or used to lick his three fingers. These three fingers being the thumb, the index, and the middle finger. The Prophet would make a morsel with these three fingers. Um, and if an individual actually does eat with just these three fingers, an individual can eat in a very uh, neat and a very pleasant manner. When we add more fingers and we add our palms and, you know, some people make... <laughs> like pellets or balls uh, of rice and then shove them into their mouth, that just becomes disgusting. If an individual eats with his three fingers, 
even at a fourth, at a fifth, but as long as he does it in a nice, in a pleasant, in a, in a, in a manner which is not disgusting. Um, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned one of the reasons of why he would lick his fingers after eating. Prophet sallallahu said that in Hadith uh, Sahih Muslim that uh, lick your fingers because at the end of the, you don't know in which morsel of food there is barakah. You don't know in which morsel of food Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed barakah. Another thing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do actually, another thing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to actually do would be uh, uh, reciting the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prior to eating. In the famous hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which comes to mind, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that an individual enters his house, he does not say the name of Allah. Shaytan enters with him. And he says to his followers that we have a place to spend the night. And when he starts partaking in his meal, he does not say the name of Allah. Shaytan says we have a place to spend the night and we have a meal. So not only do we have a place to spend the night, but we also have a hot and ready meal. And then an individual, if an individual says the name of Allah upon, standing, upon, upon entering his house, Shaitan says that we have, we are not welcome here. And when he says the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon partaking, upon consuming his meal, Shaitan says we have no food here either. We don't have a place to spend the night, nor do we have any food. Nor do we have any food. So saying the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani rahimahullah ta'ala, he goes on to say, that the way that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do, he would lick his fingers first, and then he would wipe his fing he would wipe his hands or he would uh, wash his hands or whatever the case be. So he would lick his fingers first and then partake in, in the barakah. Uh, uh, the reason being you don't know which morsel of food that the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed the barakah in. And then he would wash his hands. And then he would wash his hands. Next hadith being from Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu, and it being exactly similar to the previous hadith. Next hadith, the third hadith being uh, from Abu Juhayfa radiallahu anhu. He says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Amma ana fala akulu muttaki'an. As far as I go, I do not lean and eat. I do not lean and eat. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam typically he would sit on the ground and he would eat. He would sit on the ground and he would eat. From the next narration, we find out the Prophet sallallahu alayhi was or actually the last narration. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi due to weakness, he was actually leaning upon something uh, uh, and partaking in his meal. But by and large, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi was used to sit on, uh, used, there used to be a table spread in front of him and he would sit on the floor. Uh, a sufra would be in front of him, a table, we would translate it as a table spread uh, on the ground. And he would sit in front of it without leaning upon anything. And the Prophet ﷺ would partake in his meal in that way. Uh, next hadith being um, from Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu anhu as again, where he says similar, that the Prophet ﷺ used to use three fingers while eating and he also licked them. The Prophet ﷺ, he once actually said, um, after an individual finish, finishes eating, either he should lick his fingers or his wife should lick his fingers. Meaning, and same goes, you know, vice versa. Either she should lick her fingers or the husband should lick his, her fingers. And this is a sense of uh, creating, not only, you know, partaking, uh, not wasting food, and not knowing where uh, uh, the morsel, where Allah subhanahu, in which morsel Allah subhanahu does place barakah, but this is also a way of increasing the love between husband and wife, increasing the love between husband and wife. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aisha radiallahu anha, where she would drink from, from, from the utensil, where she would place her lips, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would look for that, he would search for that, and he would place his lips on the same exact spot. He would try placing his lips on the same exact spot. At times he would put his head in the lap of Aisha radiallahu anha. At times, even while fasting, he would, uh, he, he, he would, uh, he would kiss Aisha radiallahu anha. And these are ways to increase the love and display the love and show the love that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa had 
for his spouse, for his wife, or for his wives. Rather, just in general, the Prophet ﷺ should display his love to every single individual, whether it be to his nephews, whether it be to his son-in-law, whether it be to, to whether whether it be to 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 the various companions, the Prophet ﷺ would display love and mercy, affection uh, to all of them. Uh, just yesterday, we went over the incident of Ka'b bin Malik radiallahu anhu. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, although he is upset at Ka'b bin Malik radiallahu anhu, but still when Ka'b radiallahu anhu approaches, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is still smiling. Obviously, it's not a smile of, of, uh, of happiness. Uh, his face is not beaming out of happiness. But nonetheless, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is still smiling. The Prophet ﷺ is still smiling. The Prophet ﷺ, once he kissed uh, uh, his grandsons, uh, uh, um, Hassan and Hussein radiallahu anhuma, and one of the companions was sitting there and he said, you know, what are you, what, what? he found this strange. And uh, he said that, you know, I have multiple children, I've never done such a thing. And the Prophet ﷺ responded to him by saying, what should I do if Allah has taken away rahmah from your heart? If Allah has taken away love, mercy, compassion away from your heart, what should I do? What should I do about that? Prophet ﷺ said, uh, uh, You show love, you show mercy, you show affection towards the people of the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show rahmah to you, mercy upon you as well. Uh, that, that individual who does not have raham, that individual who does not display uh, 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 mercy and love, la yurham, he has not displayed love and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala either. And continuing on, Anas al Malik radiallahu anhu says that Utiya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi tamarin, that dates were given to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were brought to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَرَأَيْتُهُ I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam يَأْكُلُوا He was eating them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting on the support of something. Meaning he was leaning upon something due to the hunger that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam perhaps had. One of the reasons of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa leaning was due to the fact that he was extremely hungry. The Prophet was leaning upon something. Others say that this is just a, a, a way the Prophet is showing that this is something which is also permissible. This is something which is also permissible. Next chapter being in regards to the bread of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the khubz of the Prophet sallallahu the, the, the description of the bread of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, as I mentioned, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived a very, very simple life. A life that None of us can replicate. None of us can replicate. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would go days, days without months without the stove being lit, uh, without anything being cooked, so to say, in the house of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tying two stones to his belly. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam giving preference to others as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions they would give preference to, to others they would give preference to others and the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the stories of the companions are filled with these in, such incidents where they are giving preference to others over themselves they are giving preference to others over themselves rather to an extent that it did, not, it did not make sense to them that they are eating something and their neighbors go hungry. They are eating something and their neighbors go, their neighbors go hungry. Rather, we'll understand from this chapter, rather, I think it's the next chapter, uh, where the Prophet wasallam said that al-khal, uh, vinegar, is an is a, is a amazing uh, uh, type of curry. You know, ni'am al-idam al-khal. Uh, vinegar is an amazing type of curry, meaning something so simple. And obviously none of us would take bread and dip it into, dip it into vinegar and call it a meal. But such simple life, 
they would consider that an amazing dish, so to say. Um, to such an extent that they have no food. They put the kids to sleep. The companions put the, one of the companions puts his kids to sleep. Husband and wife devise a plan, we'll put the kids to sleep and we'll feed this guest of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The little food that we have, we'll present it to the guest and we will allow this guest to eat to his fill and we'll put our kids to sleep hungry. They, were, they would give preference because they knew the reward for that. They knew the reward for that. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that whenever one of you makes, makes food, makes a, a, a a type of uh, 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 curry. Uh, uh, he should increase the the water and spread it around his neighbors. And if you're making something which is sufficient for your family, increase a little bit of the water. Put a little bit more water in the curry. Yeah, perhaps you'll compromise a little bit on the taste, but more people can eat to their fill. More people can eat to their fill. <laughs> nonetheless, nonetheless. <clears throat> And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Aisha Radiallahu Anha says in regards to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَا شَبِعَ آلُ مُحَمَّدٍ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam مِنْ خُبْزِ الشَّعَيْرِ يَوْمَيْنِ مُتَتَابِعَيْنِ حَتَّى قُبِضَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Till the demise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family never ate a full stomach of bread made of barley for two consecutive days. Barley until now is not considered something luxurious. It's not con it's considered cheap. It's considered something to just get the job done. Something to get the job done. Um, <laughs> a week, say, you know, like ramen noodles. Um, and I know if, if there's any of our younger crowd listening, they'd understand this analogy. Um, but typically when you don't have anything to eat and you don't know how to cook, and you need a simple and a quick fix, you resort to ramen noodles. You resort to ramen noodles. Uh, um, quick, it takes a few minutes to make. All you do is add boiled water uh, into a cup of soup, into a cup of ready-made noodles, and they're, you know what, 50 cents uh, on the shelf at Kroger or at Myers or at Walmart, right? Very cheap, very simple. And at the end of the day, regardless of how it tastes, it fills you up. It gets you through the day. It gets you through the day. Um, so Aisha radiallahu anha is saying that his family never ate a full stomach of bread made of barley for two consecutive days. It was just never done that way. You know, they never had that much. Hadith uh, Sahih Bukhari, مَا شَبِعَ آلُ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ مُنذُ قَدِمَ الْمَدِينَةِ مِنْ طَعَامِ مِنْ طَعَامِ بُرٍ ثَلَاثَ لَيَالٍ تِبَاعٍ حَتَّى قُبِضَ this narration being three days. Three days they did not, no three days passed. Oh, in this particular hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha in this chapter, two days. But in this hadith of Sahih Bukhari, three days. Uh, Sahih Muslim has as such, مَا شَبِعَ آلُ مُحَمَّدٍ يَوْمَيْنِ مِنْ خُبْزٍ إِلَّا إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمَرٌ One of the days would eventually have to be tamar, would have to be dates. One day would be bread, one day would be dates. And similar would be many other narrations as uh, we understand from the various compilations. So in conclusion being that the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was extremely, extremely simple. The next hadith being from Abu Umama. يقول ما كان يفضل عن أهل بيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خذ الشعير that bread made of barley was never left over, was never wasted, was never left for another day, meaning there was so little in the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's never such, you know, when we make bread at home. Actually, I don't know how many people actually make bread at home anymore, uh, uh, but we, we, we typically make bread at home. Um, you make it one day, and I know back home they make it for every meal, uh, but you make it one day and it, Last you two days, three days, and uh, um, you know you, you make you make it in in, in, a, in a great number, so it can last you several days. 
but the reality was such with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We used fine flour, not barley flour. The reality was such that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, barley flour was not left over. There was none, you know, whatever they had was very little and they would cook it for that time and that's all it would last them. Next hadith being from um, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. He says, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family يَبِيتُ الْلَيَالِي مُتَتَابِعَاتٍ طَاوِيًا هُوَ وَأَهْلُهُ لَا يَجِدُونَ عَشَاء وَكَانَ أَكْثَرُ خُبْزِهِمْ خُبْزُ الشَّعِيرِ Then many consecutive nights would go by without food. There would be no asha, there would be no supper. Nights would go by. Nights would go by and there would be absolutely no food. And when they did have food, the bread of the Prophet وسلم, was mostly made of barley. Was mostly made out of barley. And Sahil bin Sa'ad عنه, was once asked, did the Prophet وسلم, ever eat bread made of white flour? Meaning made out of fine flour. Uh, um, flour which is sifted. Flour which is fine. Um... And he responded by saying, white flour may not have come before the Prophet ﷺ until his last days. And then he goes on, the question goes on to ask, did you, did you guys used to sift the flour at the time of the Prophet ﷺ? Sifting meaning um, separating the, I, I don't know if this is a proper term, the husk from the flour and making it fine, grinding it, making it fine and making it easy for us to consume. Uh, when we typically buy the flour from the store, it's already sifted. Uh, everything is already separated. All we buy is the flour. All we buy is the flour. And we don't have to worry about sifting it through anything. By the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, obviously they would plant, they, 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 would, they, they, they would grow their own crops, typically. Um, or even if they buy it, it would have to be sifted. So the way that they used to sift it, as the, uh, Sahil bin Sa'ad radiallahu anhu goes on to mention, كُنَّا نَفْخُهُ فَيَطِيرُ مِنْهُ مَا طَارَ ثُمَّ نَعْجِنُهُ That we would, uh, we would blow it. We would, we would shake it up a little bit, and then we would, we would simply just blow a little bit. Whatever husks, whatever... Um, whatever leaves from it, leaves from it, and then we would just make it and we would prepare it and we would eat it. That was the reality of it. That was the reality of it. The next hadith being from Anas and Malik radiallahu anhu. Again, you remember Anas and Malik radiallahu anhu? He uh, uh, spent 10 years serving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, مَا أَكَلَ النَّبِيُّ اللَّهِ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam عَلَىٰ خِوَانٍ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never Khiwan means ma yudaru alayhi ta'am inda aklihi. That thing where um, upon which food is put for, uh, uh, for in order for someone to consume, uh, like a table. Like a table. The Prophet never ate food from a table, nor did he eat food from small plates, meaning you know, various dishes being presented all in different different plates. Nor was, did the Prophet ﷺ eat fine flour or thin type of bread. So Qatada radiallahu anhu was asked, then what did the Prophet ﷺ put his food on and what did he eat? And he responds by saying that upon a leather uh, sufra, upon a leather tablecloth, which would be spread on the ground and the Prophet ﷺ would sit on the ground and he would eat like that. Uh, Masruq, he says that دخلت على عائشة رضي الله عنها I went to Aisha رضي الله عنها she ordered food for me and began uh, and saying I never eat a stomach full except that I feel like crying and then eventually I end up crying and Masruq he goes on to say you know why well, you know, why, why do you end up crying and she responds by saying remember the condition of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on which he left us for the next world 
And I swear by Allah that he never filled his stomach twice in one day with meat or bread. With meat or bread twice in one day, that was never done. We eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, night snack, snack during the day, a brunch, and constantly we're consuming food. The Prophet would never go where he would fill his stomach twice in one day. Aisha radiallahu anha says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi never filled his stomach with bread made of barley for two consecutive days till he passed away. Anas radiallahu anhu he says last hadith of the chapter till the end of his life Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ate ala khiwan upon ma yudha'u alayhi ta'am عِنْدَ أَكْلِهِ عِنْدَ الْأَكْلِ Upon a table. Nor did he ever eat um, bread made out of fine flour. Thin bread made out of fine flour. Meaning something which was luxurious, which we typically eat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the reality and allow us to actually focus our life, focus our attention upon the akhirah. Focus our attention upon the Akhirah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.